We're now at Lesson 12.2c, Making Predictions with Experimental Probability. A simulation is a model of an experiment that would be difficult or inconvenient to actually perform. We can use a simulation to find an experimental probability and make a prediction. So as we've learned in the last couple of parts of this video, experimental probability is the number of times the event occurs over the total number of trials as a ratio. If we spin 20 times and get red two times, the experimental probability of getting red is 2 twentieths, which we can simplify to 1 tenth, write as a decimal as 1 tenth. We could even put a zero here and make it 10 hundredths, couldn't we? And we can write it as a percent as 10%. Bob found that the experimental probability of him making a bullseye when throwing darts is one-fifth, or 20%. Use a simulation to predict the number of bullseyes he will have in his next 30 dart throws. So the first thing we do is choose a model. And since the probability is one-fifth, he can use a five-color spinner. He can use red to represent a bullseye, Orange, yellow, blue, and green can represent no bullseye. The second thing we do is perform the simulation. We spin the spinner and record the result 30 times because he's going to have 30 dart throws. We're going to let R equal red, O equal orange, Y will equal yellow, B will equal blue, and G will equal green. We spin it 30 times, and these are the results that we get. The third thing we do is make a prediction. We count the number of red as the R in the simulation. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Since there are eight red, we can predict that Bob will have eight bullseyes in his next 30 dart throws. If Bob has 18 dart throws, we would spin the spinner 18 times, recording each color. If we used five different color gems picked from a bag instead of a spinner, we would need to replace the gem into the bag for an equally likely chance of picking each color for the next pick. We need all five colors, so the probability is the same for each time we pick a gem. Let's try another. A gumball machine contains an equal number of red, blue, and green gumballs. Use a simulation to predict the number of green gumballs we will have in 10 tries. First thing we do is choose a model. Now, we have three different colors. We could use a number cube and assign one or two for red, three or four for blue, and five or six for green. Since there are three different colors, but a number cube has six sides, we can assign two numbers for each color. We perform the simulation, and we roll the number cube, and this is the result that we get. We get a 6, a 5, and a 6. That's 3. So when we make our prediction, counting the number of 5s or 6s in the simulation, we can predict three green gumballs of the next 10 gumballs that come out of the machine. Remember to use the total number of trials, that's the number of picks, spins, rolls, as the denominator. We can use an experiment to find probability by repeating the experiment many times and recording the number of favorable outcomes. Then we find the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes to the number of trials as a fraction, decimal, or percent. I want to show you one more quick thing before we finish. You can see we have a table here of color and frequency and We've got two for yellow, five for red, 19 for blue, and four for green. So Tala spun a spinner and recorded the results. And by looking at the results, we can tell that the colors on the spinner are not divided into equal sections. The number of blue is very high compared to the other colors. Look at this, there's 19 compared to single digits for the other colors, and they're low single digits. If the sections were of equal size, each probability would be close to one-fourth, and more than half had the outcome blue. So 
This is 19 thirtieths, because remember, the total of the trials is the denominator. So 19 of 30 times, it was blue. That blue section must be very large. If there's four colors on the spinner, it might be that the blue section is this big, and then the other sections are this big. And that would account for the blue having such a high number. We're finished with 12.2, and we're going to be moving on to 12.3. We're going to be exploring compound probability. And remember, the total number of frequencies, that's the number of trials, is the denominator for our ratio. Have a great day. I'm really proud of you. Join me for the next lesson. Bye.